Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode until the question and answer session of today's call. At that time, if you would like to ask a question, please press star then one. Today's call, call is also being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn today's meeting over to your host, Tyson Weister. Thank you. You may begin. Thank you, and thank you all for joining the webinar this afternoon. My name is Tyson Weister. I work on the communications team for data.census.gov, and today we are going to give a comprehensive overview on how to use the site. So with that, our goal is today for you all to walk out. We're going to focus on the live demo, and we're going to show you how to do different searches, tables, and customizing your view, how to save your results and map the information. So we just want to make sure you all are comfortable with that functionality and features on the site. Then we'll show you some brand new data.census.gov learning resources. We'll show you the top 10 feedback that we've received on the site and how important your comments are. We want to empower you to continue to send comments to us and let us know how we can make data.census.gov work better for you with that, we also have an invitation for a new survey on how you can give feedback about the site and tell us about your experience. Then we'll go through some of the common questions to get those answered right off the bat and make sure that we also have time for your individual questions and answers at the end of today. So before we get to the live demo, just want to give an overview of data.census.gov and why we're going about this transition to the new site the Application Programming Interface, or API, is at the heart of everything that we're doing on the site. So it's all about delivering the information in one place in the API and then pulling from that information to feed everything that you see on the table display, your map display, and your chart in a nice user-friendly way on data.census.gov. And by doing that through the one place, it allows us to have more flexibility. We pull individual estimates that feed into tables, maps, and charts. So it gives us more flexibility to display things in different ways. We're actually going to focus on that in the geography profile that we pull up here in the very first example, where you'll actually see data from different surveys and programs and different tables all in one view. With that live demonstration, we'll go ahead and walk through these four different examples. First, we'll show you how you can get started with census data by focusing on a single geography. We're going to pull up data for Denver County, Colorado. Then once we've done that basic search, we'll show you how you can search by table ID on the site. It's a really helpful way to get directly where you want to go if you know the table ID. Then we'll show you how you can customize your table view and save your results. In the third example, we'll transition to using the advanced search filters. If you don't know your table ID, that's okay too. We have topic filters to help you find the data that you're looking for. In this example, we'll also show you how to map and download the data. And then in the fourth and final example today, we'll build on the advanced search filter experience and just show you some additional options that are available that allow you to search by industry code and the type of survey and program. And in that final example, we'll also take you and show you some more ways that you can use custom filters in your table. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our first example, where we'll pull up the geography profile for a single geography. When you're going to data.census.gov, we recommend using Google Chrome. So I have the site pulled up here and the landing page is going to look just like this. You have two options to get started, a single search bar and the advanced search. We are going to use both, but we're going to start with the single search bar. What works well here are keywords, so topics, geographies, table IDs, and a single NAICS code. So I'm going to type in my geography of interest, Denver County, Colorado, and press Enter. And this is going to take us to our All Results page. It gives you a featured statistic right up at the top, some of the top table recommendations laid out out of the total more than 2,000 tables available for this geography. 
as well as the corresponding maps for each of the tables. And then you also get results for the different web pages on census.gov that relate to this search. What I want to show first is the geography profile, and in the upper right, where it says Explore Data, Denver County, Colorado Profile, I'll click in that blue box, and it will take us to our profile here. So here we can see it's already zoomed into the area, and this is just a great page if you're feeling overwhelmed with the breadth of census data that are available on the site and you're not sure where to start or if you're just new in general, this has a collection of popular information in one nice, easy view. You have the four most popular statistics from the Census Bureau, total population, median income, poverty, and employment. And as you scroll down, you'll get high-level information on the left, such as median age for the county, compared to median age for the United States, and more detailed information on the right-hand side in very easy to digest bar charts, line charts, and maps. And we can just scroll through this. There are a lot of different topics in one place. If you see something of interest, like education, you can pause for a moment and give that some time to load the data on your screen where you can also kind of look at the information. But what I wanted to point out here is that we have the source information right here for you. So you can see that this data come from table DP02. And I'm actually going to make note of that, and we'll show you another way that you can search for that later. But you can certainly click on these links as well and dive right into the data. And then the last thing on the profile of note is on the left-hand side, if you see a topic of interest, you can also click on them. It bypasses the scrolling. So here I've clicked income and poverty, and I can see data for median household income with another separate table ID for DP03 from the American Community Survey. So this is just a great starting point in, in getting uh, kind of dive into census data and maybe even some table IDs that you might want to visit later, and that's going to transition us over to our second example, where we're actually going to show how to search by table ID, how you can customize your view, how you can print, export, and save your table results. So with this, we're going to build off of the table IDs that we already gathered from the geography profiles. We know DP03 and DP02, and then we're going to pull this up for a few different geographies so you can see the data side by side. We're going to look at the Denver County, we're going to compare that to the state of Colorado, and then data for one of the zip code tabulation areas. So going back to the site here, when you're ready to start fresh, you can click the U.S. Census logo in the upper left, which takes you back to the landing page and starts you fresh. It clears everything out. So you can search by table ID by typing it in the single search bar. And we've actually pushed some improvements to make this process even easier. We'll show that later in the example, but we're going to type in DP03 and press Enter. And then once you're ready, you can go ahead and click Tables in the upper left. And this has narrowed our results to the exact table ID that we specified. Data Profile 3, Selected Economic Characteristics from the American Community Survey. By default, we'll be getting data for the United States, but you can specify additional geographies. One of the ways that you can do that is to click on the left-hand side of your table results where it says Filter, and this allows you to select your geography by going through a series of clicks and look for a checkbox as a final selection. So first we're going to click on geography, and then we'll choose the level of geography we're interested in before we had typed in Denver County in the single search, but here we can click county, choose Colorado, and then scroll until we see the checkbox for Denver County, Colorado. That's another way you can go about selecting your geography. Once you've marked the checkbox and scroll back up, 
you'll see it's been added as a selected filter. We can continue this process. You can add as many geographies as you'd like. I'm going to choose to compare to the state and select Colorado. And then another geography that data users often want is zip code level data. If you're looking for demographic information, the geographic level that you want is called zip code tabulation area. So once you've selected that geography, it's going to give you a list of the first 100 zip code tabulation areas in the U.S. What I like to do is click the magnifying glass in the upper right, and this allows me to bypass all of the scrolling and just type in what I'm looking for. So here I'm going to type in 80204. It's one of the zip code areas in Denver. And then, of course, we'll check the box in order to add that to our selection. So now I have the three geographies that I'm interested in. I can see that at the top here. And I don't need to make any more selections, so we'll just click the chevron that says hide in the upper right. And now we can kind of start looking at the table. I'm actually going to click customize table in the upper right so we can view this across our full screen. And the last thing to keep in mind as you're accessing data is to always look into the product drop-down menu. The reason it's so important, particularly with the American Community Survey tables, is that the AC estimates, ACS five-year estimates provide you data for all geographic areas, and the one-year estimates are only available for selected geographies that have 65,000 people or more. So if you're not seeing data for all your areas, make sure to check the product drop-down menu and choose the five-year estimates. And now we can start looking at the table and see what data is offered. It shows a column for total labeled estimate, as well as the corresponding percentages and margins of error for each of those. You can scroll down in the table and see the different topics provided. This one covers employment, commuting, occupation, industry, class of worker, and we had seen in the geography profile the item for median household income. However, this table also provides more information about household income breakout. So I want to actually look at the data for breakout of household income and compare against the different geographies, but there's maybe a little more information in the table than I'm actually interested in. So you can customize the information that you see on your screen using the options at the top. There's a button to turn off the margin of error if you're not interested in that. You can also click where it says hide, and that will allow you to remove columns from your view that you're not interested in. I'm going to uncheck the boxes for estimate so I can compare percentages a little bit easier across these geographies. And once you're done making your selections on the right-hand side, you can click hide again at the top of the table. And now we can kind of compare very easily across the geographies. As an example, we can see households with less than 10,000 in income, 5.1% for the state versus 7% for the county, and 14.9% for the zip code area we selected. Once you've found something that you're interested in, you maybe want to save it, print it, or have the data off the site. There are a couple of different options for you there. I'm going to show you first how you can export the table by right-clicking the table and hover over where it says Export Table, and I'm going to choose Excel Export. And if you're using Chrome, click the lower left to open up the file. Any of the options where you right click the table and you export it or you copy, it's going to give you format that looks very similar to the table. So our geographies are at the top in the columns and the data labels are on the left. And it's also reflected all the customizations we made on screen. There's no margin of error. The columns that we hid are not provided in this exported output. Another option is you can print the table. Do know that our print provides 
information for small tables, so you may want to make some adjustments before you start printing. If you're not working with a small table especially, a couple tricks you can do are click arrows for any of the sections that you're not interested in. Here I'm actually interested in income, so I'm just going to hide some of the earlier sections. And then you can also adjust the column width. So I'm going to make some of these a little bit more narrow. And then once you're ready to print your table, you can just press Control P or Command P if you're on a Mac. And this gives you the notice that the first page of the table will print, and you just click Yes to proceed along. And then you can see the data first with the table, but it also provides the data notes. I'm going to cancel this and then just click on the data note just to show you in the upper left of your table, there is a button for data notes that has useful source information and links to technical documentation. We always recommend checking this out for your table of interest, especially if you'd like to learn more about the data and survey that your table provides. And then the other thing that you can do is save the table itself. If you want to save the link, just click into the address bar and copy that link, and then you'll save it in a Word document or an email. When you're ready to return to the link, I'm going to open a new tab and just show you how you paste it. And it takes you back to the exact view you were in with your geographies and tables. Any additional customizations you made to the table view um, may not necessarily be reflected in that URL. Here we can see the margin of error has carried over as being turned off. Um, but the other modifications are back to the default view. However, your primary geographies and table will definitely be there. And then the last thing that I wanted to show, once you're ready to search for a new table, you can click into the same search bar. And this is one of the major improvements that we just pushed out last month. Type a new table ID. Here I'm going to type in DP02. And then I'm going to press Enter. Notice that when I clicked into the single search bar, there was this section that had my filters for my geographies I selected. And by default, the toggle was turned on to remember these filters for my next search. So with that, my table still shows my new table, data for Colorado, Denver County, and my zip code area. In the past, that particular functionality would have um, not saved your searches and you would have gotten data for the United States. So just making it easier. And this is all based on your feedback on how we make the site work better. So I'm going to switch over to the advanced search experience. Um, oftentimes when you're searching for the site, you won't know the exact table ID offhand, but that's okay. You can search by topic. We're going to look at how you define data for the population 60 years and over for all census tracts in Denver County, Colorado. If you're not familiar with the census tract geography, that's okay too because we're going to map it where you can visualize this. So once again, I'm going to click the U.S. Census logo in the upper left to take me back to the landing page. And this time we are going to use the advanced search. We already have a preview of it from when we used the geography filters earlier. What you're looking for are to use these filters and, of course, looking for that checkbox as a final selection. Any words and phrase that you click on that doesn't have a checkbox will give you more detailed options to the right to choose from. So first, I'm going to choose my geography. I click geography and I see track. And then you follow the prompt, clicking Colorado, Denver County, Colorado. And then I can choose individual census tracts, or there's this checkbox at the top that lets me select all of the census tracts in the county in just that one click. It's been added to the bottom of my screen as a selected filter. And now I'll choose the topic. Clicking on topic, I'm looking for information for older age 60 and over. So I'm going to click on populations and people. 
I see an option for older population, so I'm going to mark that checkbox. You may see another checkbox that may be relevant to your search, such as age and sex. What I recommend is always making your best guess, and if you're not getting the results you expect, go back into your search, remove the first topic you selected, and then substitute your next best guess. Here I have my geography and my topic. I'm going to click search in the lower right and tables in the upper left. So the first step before we try to map the population 60 years and over is to first find a table that has that information that we're looking for. I'm going to give the first table results a look to see if it has that information. I can see as I scroll down on the table, it's giving me detailed age breakouts to start. And then I start to see something that says selected age categories. And as I scroll through that, I can see the line item for 60 years and over. When I follow this across the screen, you can see for the first census tract, the total number of people age 60 and over was 563, which is 16.5% of that census tract population. So this table definitely has what it is that I'm looking for, so I'll be able to transition over to the map. I just want to take a little bit more time to familiarize myself with the table. As I go through, I can also see there's a column for male and percent male with the age breakout, female and percent female. And then I get back to total. So there are six different columns that provide data for this table. Familiarizing yourself with the layout on the table will help you when you go to the data variable to map. And now that I'm ready to map, I'm going to click on map in the upper left. And we've made some improvements so that it automatically zooms you into your selected area by default. All you need to do next is click on the table that contains the data variable you'd like to map. In this case, it's the first result age and sex, and then you can choose the data variable that you map out. I like to click on Customize Map in the upper right, and then the data variable dropdown. By default, it's mapping out the very first estimate that was in the table, in this case for total population, but when you click the data variable dropdown, you'll get more options. Now, everything on the site loads in sections, so what I like to do is keep scrolling down to the bottom until my scroll stops jumping back up. And then I know that I've loaded all of the possible options that I could map from that table. And then it's a matter of going back up and carefully reading the labels. We see the first set of labels are for the total, followed by another set of labels for the percent. And then you'll see male, percent male, female, percent female. We wanted the percent of the total population, and we're specifically in the table. We're able to find that data point in the selected age category. So once you kind of read through this, percent, total population, selected age category, 60 years and over, estimate, you'll click on that. And now our map has updated to map out the percent of the population 60 years and over. The nice thing is that we can have a number overall for the county, but the census tract lets us look at this for a much smaller geographic area, and we can zoom into the map and click on the different areas. And as you zoom in more, you'll see street labels start to populate, so you may start to see areas that you recognize. You can click on the value and we can see four census tracts, 70.89, 64.6% of their population is aged 60 years and over. In the customized map view on the left, one other helpful area is where it says view table. This gives you a table view of the one estimate that you chose to map out. So if you're not interested in all of the extra information in S0101, you can get a table with just that estimate. And then all of the tables that we have, you can click on the column header 
where it says total population in order to sort that in ascending or descending order. And the last thing I wanted to showcase with this example is how you can download the information for the full table. Here I'm going to click go to full table. And then you may need to click on more and download depending on how far you're zoomed in. But once you've clicked download, this allows you to download across years. I'm going to choose download. Let the progress bar load up to 100% and click download now. And then you'll click in the lower left to open up that zip file. And what you want to open is the file that has data with overlays in the naming convention. Once you double click on that, it's going to give you the download output. So the first example that we showed you, I right click the table and export it. That always gives you something that looks like the table in your output. Anytime you click something on the site that says download, you're going to get a machine readable file. So this is really helpful file format if you want to map, sort, or manipulate the information. You'll notice your geographies are in the rows. And all of the estimates you saw on the nice table display on data.census.gov are here without any special formatting or indentation. And then the column labels in the first, two, the first two rows tell you what data it is that you're looking at. So you can type in a keyword if you want, like 60 years, if you wanted to get there a little faster, or just carefully read through the information that's in these first set of columns. But you can see in this example, when you're in LP, you're looking at the percent of the population 60 years and over. This is all the information that we saw on the nice table display just a moment ago. And now we'll go ahead and work through our last example. Just building on the advanced search, how can we search by industry code and specify a particular survey and program and apply custom filters. And for this example, we're going to look at the number of establishments for nursing and residential care facilities. We're going to look at this for all counties in Colorado and see which counties have 25 or more businesses in this particular category. So back to the search, we'll click on the U.S. Census logo in the upper left, click on Advanced Search. And then the first thing I'm going to do is specify my industry code. We'll click Codes on the left, Industry Code, Make. And here's where you can kind of browse through the options that are available in the categories. If you're not already familiar with what you need, I happen to know that I need code 623. So I'm going to click on code prefix 62, healthcare and social assistance. Then choose 623, nursing and residential care facilities. And remember, you're always looking for a checkbox as a final selection. So you want to click 623, but then also choose the checkbox at the top in order to make sure it's added to the bottom of your screen as a selected filter. Next, we'll choose all counties in Colorado, clicking Geography. And just want to show you one additional feature is this Show Summary Level Toggle. This is helpful to turn on if you know the three-digit code for your geographic area or if you've made other selections like this industry code and you're not sure which geographic areas you could be getting census data for. Any area that's clickable you can get data for this particular code, and geographic areas that are grayed out are not compatible with this particular selection. So I'm going to choose county, Colorado, and all counties in Colorado. And then one optional step, if you want to further refine your table results, you can click where it says surveys. We have uh, lots of data from our economic surveys and programs like county business patterns, but if you want the most comprehensive information, you would want to get that from the economic census. So I'm going to specify that in my search criteria by clicking the checkbox for ECN Economic Census U.S. Basic Data. 
Then we'll click Search in the lower right and Tables in the upper left. And I just want to look at this first table result. Once again, we'll click Customize Table to see that across our full screen. And then just to look at the information in this table, you can see for each geography, there are, or, well, depending on the geography for each one, there are three lines here that we see if it gets the full set of data. And the reason for that is that one of the lines has data for all establishments, but this particular table also breaks the information out if you wanted to focus just on nursing and residential care facilities subject to federal income tax and those exempt from federal income tax. If I just wanted to look at data for all establishments, we can also make some tweaks here on the table. So just want to show you a couple things you can do. One is you can pin the column in place so that it stays in view as you scroll horizontally. Notice as I move to the right, I lose my geography label. You can choose any column that you want to freeze just by clicking the three bars over the column header, and then hover over pin column and choose whether you want it on the left or right side of your screen. And now we can go ahead and filter some of the information. So I just want data for all establishments. So under meaning of tax status code, I'm going to filter out the categories for income tax. Once again, we'll click on the three bars, but this time I'm going to choose the filter icon just beside the three bars. And then it's that easy. You just have checkboxes that are available to you. So you can uncheck them all and then just check whatever you're interested in. Here I'm going to choose all establishments and leave the other two options unmarked. And now we can see on the left hand side, we've removed the additional detail from our table. And now we have one line for each geography. This particular table gives us information for the total number of firms, establishments, sales, payroll, employees, and more. I'd want to know how many establishments by county, which counties have 25 or more, and you can also filter right here on screen, clicking the three bars, and the filter icon is still marked from our last selection, but in this case, we're looking at data values. So because we have data values instead of categories, we don't have checkboxes, we have other options. In here, I can choose from the dropdown. I want to know which counties have 25 or more, so I'm going to choose greater than or equal, and then you'll type in your data value. Here I'm choosing 25, and notice as I'm making each click, it's already filtering the table. So once you click outside, we can see that these are the counties in Colorado that have 25 or more establishments for this particular industry code. I'm going to go back here move on to our next slide here. What we want to transition to in our outline is showing you the new data.census.gov learning resources. And actually that's on the live site as well. I'm going to click the U.S. Census logo and it's very easy to get to these resources. Beyond today's demo that I just showed you, we have a whole suite of educational materials. They're in a variety of formats. You'll just click the help under the single search bar, and that'll take you to the data.census.gov resources page. I'm not going to walk through every part of the site, but I did want to highlight a couple of useful areas. The first is under our news and updates. When you open that up, every Tuesday and Thursday there's a potential for a data release, and when there are data that are actually released, whether it's on data.census.gov or some of our other data access points, we post that information here. So you, I'm going to click on the second one. When the data are released, you'll see a title. And then when you open it up, it's going to take you to a table or search on the appropriate site. In this case, we've clicked on an example on data.census.gov for a recent release. Going back to the page here, beyond just staying up to date, on the latest information, we are continuing to migrate 
older data from the prior site, as well as new surveys and programs that are being released on the first time. You can also click under Guidance for Data Users to get more information on how to use the site. The first thing I'm going to open up are how-to materials for using data.census.gov. We have a variety of PDFs that walk through functionality of the site generally from beginning to end. And then as you scroll down, you can also pull up information for specific how-tos. As an example, if you wanted to reference how to download a table, you could open this PDF and you'll see that there are step-by-step -step instructions with accompanying screenshots. Another part is the transition from American Fact Finder. We are continuing to work on migrating some of that historical information as that migration is happening. We update our data availability chart that's posted here, as well as the very first resource I showed you with the data release and the link. And then for some of the data sets that aren't on data.census.gov, you can also find where to access the information using the links on this page. If you'd like other ways to access educational materials, we also offer video tutorials. We just released a set of videos. We continue to release more and more. These are short videos that walk through specific examples or functionality. For example, if you wanted to revisit how to print and transfer data tables to Excel and a variety of other features on data.census.gov, we definitely encourage you to check out this format as well. And then, of course, this webinar, as well as our other full-length webinars, are recorded and they're posted in the section here. And the last part I wanted to show was our updated release notes. We have done a total rewrite of this document and update to make it work for all users. So whether you're following us along data.census.gov or if you're new to the site and want an overview, this has the information that you'll want and need. The very first section will give you the latest updates. So just last month, we released a number of updates to the system. They're highlighted here. The first example was what I showed you with the single search and the advanced search, but we encourage you to check out the latest updates that are available from the last release and revisit this in the future to continue to stay up to date. This information also gives you um, the high-level known limitations and defects, and then it will lay out the features. So if you want an overview on what's available for the site across the board, it will walk you through everything that's available. As you scroll through, you'll see things for single search, navigation, tables. And once you see something of interest, we also provide not only the functionality that's available, so this example tells you in the table view, you can freeze columns in place. But if we link to something, we tell you how to do that as well. So here we've linked to the FAQ on how to freeze columns in a table that walks you through that process with step-by-step -step screenshots. While we're on the frequently asked questions, there are a data.census.gov section on our FAQs as well. And there are different subcategories. One of our more popular ones are on how to use the site. So we encourage you to also continuously learn and visit how to use the site by getting answers to your FAQs here. Moving back here to the slides, we'll get the slideshow started back up here. We wanted to talk about the feedback on how your comments help us improve data.census.gov and show you the top 10 feedback items that we've received since April, and then to talk about the new survey that we have. So many of you have been giving us comments by emailing us at sedsci.feedback at census.gov. We definitely encourage you to continue to do this when we get a comment or data question through sedsci.feedback at census.gov. It goes through this process. And um, with the site in general, we are continuously improving it through an incremental development process. And then we release those set of improvements about every two months or so when we push them live to the public site. So when we get comments, 
in the upper left, we receive the feedback. We go through a series of steps to analyze the feedback. And then once we have an overall analysis, we provide that to what we call our value team. And they look at the feedback that's being received by the public in order to determine the next set of improvements that we make to the site and when specific improvements are targeted for a particular update. Once that work has been committed to, our developer, developers work to make the improvement. We do a variety of testing, and then we release the improvement to the public. And then this last step is we continuously collect the feedback. So if you're emailing us at sedsci.feedback, it's helpful to do it if you haven't already. And if you are, it's helpful to continue to send us that feedback. But we wanted to give a little bit more of a look. When you email us, it doesn't go into a black box somewhere. We definitely value the feedback that we get. And we go through a lot of work to make sure that we are able to pull out meaningful information from it. This is a look at the top 10 categories of information that folks are asking about or providing suggestions for when they email us. So you can see data availability as the number one, folks wanting more surveys and programs added and more historical information added to the site. Questions and comments about how to navigate a new site. Questions and comments about the filters that we showed. Download, wanting more customization options as well as comments about the download output, performance of the site in terms of speed, pseudo-geography, that's when we refer to the check boxes on our site that allow you to select collections of geographies in a single click. So we have some collections, some of the ones we use today were all census tracts in Denver County, in all counties in Colorado. We're having comments from folks requesting more types of check boxes that aren't currently available on the site. Folks wanting PDF and printing functionality that's more robust than Control-P. Wanting the ability to search by address and see the census geographies associated with the address and the data for those geographies. Search relevancy and questions and comments about mapping. So you can see this is quite the number of different categories. These top 10 represent 63% of all the feedback that we've received since April. And everything that we're doing is driven by the user feedback. So not only do we know the high-level categories, but for each of these categories, we provide detailed subcategories that give more information for what users are asking about. So when we say download, we don't we know the, the different areas of download that folks are wanting improvements on. You can see in this particular example, don't like download format, folks maybe not knowing that they can right click and use export or copy to get output that looks similar to the table display is a large portion of what's making up our questions and comments about downloading. We also get instances where the download is failing, general download issues, folks wanting bulk download capability, similar to a download center, download defects, or folks just not knowing how to download in general and needing some instructions. So if you're sending feedback, please continue. It's super helpful for us whether you ask a question or just give your comments. It gives very meaningful information that we're able to take value from and make improvements to the site. And in that spirit, we also wanted to let you know about a new survey where you can tell us about your experience on data.census.gov. We really encourage folks just to use this as an additional method to give us more detailed feedback. If you visit the link at the bottom, we'll also be sharing it in the chat. It will take you about 15 minutes or so to complete, and we'd really appreciate it. You can also access this survey by clicking on the Help button under the landing page of data.census.gov. And on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see an orange box that will take you to this survey. With that, we do want to make sure that we allow time for questions. 
and address some of the common questions first off. One of those, what data are available, you can visit the link at the bottom for a detailed data availability chart. What is the recommended browser? It's Google Chrome. It gives you the best speed and performance. So if you're having any issues accessing the site, we definitely recommend using Google Chrome if you aren't already. Once folks are able to get to a table, they often have another series of questions. One of those we encountered today, why does my table not show all of my geographies or why am I unable to select my geography? Oftentimes, you'll want to click into the product drop-down menu and choose ACS five-year estimates. This will be a solution to many of the questions that we get regarding this. Why does my download not look like the table? Please know that the download format is providing you machine-readable output. You want to right-click the table to export or copy-paste if you want output that looks like the table display. How can I print my table? You'll use Control P to print small tables. Anything larger, you'll want to right click and export. And then from there, you can print from Excel or convert it to a PDF. Why are my geographies and data values not in order? Um, some folks are taken aback when they first see the results on their screen or in the download. You can see on the right hand side, the geographies are not in alphabetical order. We've requested data for all states, and it starts with Colorado and goes to Indiana. Please be aware that geographies may not appear in alphabetical order, but they will be in all of your results. The same thing for your data values. When we download this table, the very first option is that it's giving us the 17th estimate from the table, the total females 19 to 64 years with public health coverage do know that the previous data lines are in your downloaded file. They're just farther to the right in one of the other columns. Where are the checkboxes? Select all geographies in a list. If you're not seeing them there now, please email us at sedsci.feedback at census.gov as we continue to add more based on user feedback. Another common question is searching by address. We don't have that functionality on our site yet, but you can use the census geocoder to find this information, and we have a step-by-step -step FAQ, the link's at the bottom, and it walks through this process for you. With that, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. If you don't get a chance to ask your question, we also invite you to contact us. If you're a member of the media, please use PIO at census.gov. And then for all other users, please email us at sedsci.feedback at census.gov. Operator, can you please open up for questions? Certainly. As a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please press star and then one. Remember to unmute your phone and record your name clearly when prompted. If you would like to withdraw your question, please press star then two. Again, if you would like to ask a question, star then one. One moment as we wait for the first question. And as we're waiting for questions to come through, just wanted to send out another invitation. We definitely appreciate if you could complete that survey for us. We'll send the link once again on the chat. And we also wanted to let you know about other educational resources and data access points from the Census Bureau. One is called Microdata Access on data.census.gov. If you're not finding a pre-made table on our site, you can create one yourself using a set of underlying microdata. You can learn more about how to use this particular functionality and feature by visiting the link on the site where there's short videos and webinars. And going hand in hand with that, we also have short videos, webinars, and step-by-step -step PDFs for using the application programming interface or API. This would allow you to call the data from its source and see the results on screen in your web browser or you can access and download the information into a CSV file. And lastly, but very importantly, we also wanted to let you know about the Census Bureau's training site. It's census.gov slash academy, where you'll find more resources for all topics and data tools across the Census Bureau. 
and in the bottom right of the screen is contact information. We have data dissemination specialists that are located throughout the country that are happy to give um, personalized webinars and trainings for you. And if you'd like to request one, you can contact them at census.askdata at census.gov or 1-844-ASK-DATA. These are provided free of charge. Operator, do we have questions in the queue? We do. We have a few. I'll go ahead and open up the first line. Our first question comes from Bruce Verunda. Go ahead. Your line is open. Thank you, Andy and Tony. I really enjoyed all your explanations. And I just want to um, ask you, will you continue webinars even though the census will close uh, September 30th from October the 1st through December 31st? And the second part is about this margin of error when numbers and surveys are reported for the 2020 census. How are you going to um, express the margin of errors once the census is stopped collecting in 2020? Great, so thank you for those questions. Those are actually going to be both best addressed by our Public Information Office, PIO, at census.gov. Um, I am not an expert in the 2020 census. Once the data are released, we will have the data on data.census.gov, but we don't have any information regarding timelines or release schedules. In terms of margins of error, that is something that is applicable only to the American Community Survey. and that's because the ACS is based on a sample rather than 100% count. So the margin of error just tells you if I add and subtract the published margin of error from the estimate, I can be 90% confident that that range would be the value for the true population if we were able to do the 100% count. Um, and then in terms of the I think you referred to it as a closure. The only thing I'm aware of with the end of September is regarding data collection and operations for the 2020 census. That is separate from the work that we do on data.census.gov, and we would still have the site up and be working. Um, any additional questions in regards to that, please contact our public information office at PIO at census.gov. Thank you. Our next question comes from Evan Hazenfeld. Go ahead. Your line is open. Yes, I, I had two quick, quick questions. First one is, is there an intention to eventually ask a question about registered voters in the ACS? I, I know currently the only place where they ask is in the CPS, the Community Population Survey, uh, and uh, the ACS has the benefit of having congressional district uh, uh, by congressional district, but it doesn't ask registered voters, while the CPS has registered voters but not congressional districts. Anyway, uh, the second question was, uh, I was looking at the uh, CPS tables that are available through uh, what you just showed me, and you're currently unable to really search through the CPS. It's in beta. Is there an intention to make it so you can search it? Because I'm having difficulty finding the registered voter text in the CPS data set. Those are great questions. So in terms of the American Community Survey and the content that is or isn't on the survey, that question would also be best addressed through our Public Information Office. I do know that the ACS has data on voting age population, but as you indicated, we do not ask for registration on the ACS currently. Um, in terms of the CPS tables, there are a couple of different ways that you can access the CPS data. And I'm going to showcase on the resources page here on the help. And then under guidance for data users, the how-to materials for microdata access will give you some links. Um, oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. I wanted to transition from data ferret. And this will give you information on certain data sets. I would check this as a first place as an answer to your question. And if you're still not finding what you're looking for, um, please email us at sedsci.feedback at census.gov, and we can do a little bit more digging and provide a more tailored response if this does not answer your question. 
Okay, thank you. I'm more specifically looking for registered voters, and I'm not seeing that there, so I will contact you. Yes, please do. Thank you. Hi, am I up now? Um, you ready for the yeah, next ready question? For the next question if the operator has opened the line already. Okay, great. Um, so in looking through your data, I found the house heating fuel, uh, the way it categorizes things is probably fine for the past, but in the future, heat pumps are going to be dramatically more important um, as we move towards decarbonizing. How do we... Uh, how do we get you to, for instance, change the way you collect the data in the future so that instead of just saying electricity uh, as a heating fuel, um, you break it down into uh, resistance plus heat pumps and preferably even break the heat pumps into air source and ground source? Who, who, who do we talk to to get you to change the way you collect the data? Sure. So. That would be another great question. It's a constant question for the American Community Survey. I would email acso.users.support at census.gov. Um, there could be a number of things going on in terms of the level of detail when we collect the information versus how it is tabulated. So you would want to make sure that um, we don't collect more detail than what's in some of the published tables. It's possible some, of the, some published tables may have more detail than other published tables. In addition, the microdata access may be able to answer your question. If you're not able to get the level of topic detail, that would just be the good feedback to send to ACSO.user support. And you also maybe want to check out the American Housing Survey to see if they may be able to offer more detail for that topic. Okay, thanks. Our next question is from Wayne Knight. Go ahead, your line is open. Yes, my question is, do you have the history of any of these data, and can you search the history? So what we have currently on the site, the earliest data that we offer on data.census.gov is from the 2000 census. Under the advanced search, there is a filter for years, and if you're interested in data for a particular year, you can use this filter to get data all the way back to Census 2000. When you've pulled up a table, I'm just going to type in, one of the tables we looked at was DP02. You can also click on the product drop-down menu and access data over time back to 2010 for this particular survey and program. Okay, is 2000 the earliest uh, that you've got it, or can you go back beyond 2000? It's the earliest that's on our site. If you're looking for prior historical census data, there are a couple different avenues that you could take. One is the decennial census um, webpage, and um, it's just a link that has some helpful PDFs in there if you're just looking for high-level information. The other resource is our FTP site. Um, this is the link I was just referencing where you can click between the different years all the way back to 1790 and then um, the FTP site as well. We also link to that information in our resources page on uh, data.census.gov. I'm just going to pull that up here quick. It's under one of the options that I showed under Guidance for Data Users, and then the transition from American Fact Finder that gives you the FTP link to some of the older data sets. Um, you can just click on one of these as a starting point and then go through the different folders. All right. Thanks very much. You're welcome. For our next question, I would like to ask that only one question be asked and no follow-up questions so we can ensure we get to as many questions as possible. Thank you. Our next question comes from Bryce Urowskwin. Go ahead. Your line is open. Hi. Thank you. Um, I was just curious on the, um, is there a way, if, if we're interested in, um, 
you know, break, getting down into a county, is there a way to see the zip codes that make up a county, or can you only search an individual zip code? Uh, is there a way to see, like, a list of the codes that make up that county? So that is something that it's really best addressed for our geography division at uh, geo.geography at census.gov. Um, there are a couple of different resources that are available. One of them that I like to use off of the site is called Mabel GeoCore 2014. So it's not the most up-to-date in terms of the geography boundary, but you would just start by clicking your particular state, and then you would choose the high-level geography you're interested in, county, and then you want the zip codes within the county. And then once you scroll down, you'll run the request. And what it's going to give you is a file with all of the counties in the state by alphabetical order, and then the zip codes that are in that particular county. But please keep in mind uh, that counties and zip code boundaries don't neatly align, so the zip codes aren't nested neatly within the counties. There may be zip codes where part of the zip code is in one county and part of the zip code is in another county. So just be mindful of that as you're working through this and then when you ultimately pull the Census Bureau data for that particular geographic area. Our next question comes from Chuck Thomas. Go ahead. Your line is open. Hi. I wondered if you were ever going to release a file that has and information on all the fields that are available throughout your databases and which database they're referring to. So in terms of knowing what's compatible with each particular database, there isn't a file that does it, but as you work through the advanced search, one thing I just wanted to point out here of functionality that exists on the site is each time you check a box, other options that are not compatible are grayed out. So if you wanted to know the American Community Survey data profiles, which topics are covered in that, if I select the survey first and then I click on topics and work through this, notice it's already grayed out government. And as you work through this, options that are not compatible are grayed out. We don't have any additional documentation um, that hits at what you're describing, but I think this may, may help you in addition to any documentation that the specific surveys and programs have. You can access that documentation through the data notes section of the table. Our next question comes from Christina Johnson. Go ahead. Your line is open. Hello. Um, the uh, census campaign ranks places in a state by their successful response rates, but for some reason they separate cities from townships. And within cities, that could represent villages and boroughs. And townships is called towns and townships. And that doesn't really make sense in our state, at least in New Jersey, because uh, cities can be small and it's just a form of government. Can you explain why they do that? Um, I don't have information as to the ways and the reason that particular geographic areas are the way that they are, that would be best addressed by geo.geography at census.gov. If you're working on our site and you're having trouble finding the particular geography that you're interested in, what I can say is that the townships are located under county subdivision, summary level 060, and places like cities and towns would be under 160 place within state. So if you're having trouble finding it on our site, I would recommend one of those two summary levels. Beyond that, um, I don't have any information as to why the geographies are defined the way that they're defined. Our next question comes from Ms. Chow. Go ahead. Your line is open. Oh, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I apologize for the uh, uh, misunderstanding a few minutes earlier. I have a quick question for you for Census 2010 and also ACS data after that. 
the uh, data are compiled by 2010 geography, and as of today, PSAP 2020 is just completed. So for 2020 census and also ACS data after 2020, uh, the new geography, 2020 geography will be used. Is there going to be a breach table in our uh, in data census.gov that a user could uh, figure out or compare the uh, 2010 census with the 2020 census? Because we're using your data anyway by different geography, different uh, different uh, decennial geography. Yeah, that's a great question and um, good suggestion for us. I am not aware of any plans on data.census.gov that would do any type of geographic comparison over time for you. Generally, the geography division also handles that documentation, so I would reach out to them if you're not aware of the resources already at geo.geography at census.gov, and they would be able to point you to the best resources to help you compare changes across geographies over time. The only thing that I can think of on our site that you could do is when you get over to the map section, when you click on the year drop-down menu, that would allow you to visualize data for a single geography over time. So when the time gets there, you could click on 2010 and then choose the geographic level that you're interested in and then change your drop down to 2020 and see how the boundary may have shifted or not shifted. Beyond that, um, I would recommend geo.geography at census.gov. Our next question comes from Jennifer Green. Go ahead, your line is open. Hi, um, I just wanted to follow up quickly on data ferret. So I just noticed it looks like you guys are um, moving away from that. Um, are we still going to be able to download full data sets to do analysis in SPSS? Yes, yeah. so there are a couple different ways you can do that. Um, the way that you access the new functionality to create custom tables is on data.census.gov, explore microdata. I recommend checking out the resources I shared earlier. I'm not going to walk through the process now, but when you're in this site, there is an option to download information for selected variables and geographies. If you really want the full set of data, I recommend the FTP site. Um, that would be the transition from data ferret page that would take you to some of that information as well as the data for the surveys and programs. If you're having trouble navigating the FTP site to find what it is you're looking for, please email us with your specific data set that you're looking at um, at feedback at census.gov, and we can certainly help you locate it. Our next question comes from John Leonard. Go ahead. Your line is open. Hi. Thank you for these uh, webinars. They're extremely helpful, and I think I got most of the information from that last question about the microdata, but one of the things I'm curious about is, is it possible to work with custom geographies for your data polls? For example, like coming up with an impact area that doesn't necessarily fall neatly within, say, a city boundary or county boundary, but actually working with a geography or a set of uh, IDs such as, you know, uh, block groups or census tracts. So what we have on the site for data.census.gov is just the census-defined geographies. That does go down to the census block, block group, and census tract level. You could select those geographies individually. We don't have any functionality currently that would allow you to upload a custom geography of your own and get data or functionality that would let you aggregate the census geographies into one area and give you the lump sum data for that area. You would have to look at the, the individual pieces right now, um, but that's definitely great, great feedback for us moving forward and something that we can take into consideration as we continue to make improvements. Our next question comes from Andre Michalik. Go ahead, your line is open. Uh, hello, uh, um, hello, Census Echo. Hi, yeah, this is Andre calling from Louisiana. Thank you for your wonderful work on the Census website. Uh, my question is, um, uh, in the uh, uh, drill down, I know like there's an option to select many items 
And this is probably asked before, but I guess I'll ask it again. I'm not sure. Um, is there a way to select all the items? Like if they're by state, is there a way to select all states instead of each individual state? That's my question. Yeah, that's a great question. So some of the options are there that allow you to select all items in a list, but they're predefined. So what you'd be looking for is a checkbox at the very top of the list that says something like all states in the United States. We also have similar checkboxes for some of our code sets. So when you're looking at the industry codes, you may want all the available codes in general, all the two-digit codes, et cetera. If, they're, if you're working through this screen on the filters and you're not seeing an option that you're looking for, please email us and uh, we would add that to our feedback for consideration as a possible future enhancement. Our final question comes from Michelle Wade. Go ahead, your line is open. Hi, um, thank you. I have a question about accessing American Community Survey data that I used to access on American Fact Finder. So I'm wondering if I have to download the microdata to find some things um, that I used to find by plugging them into American Fact Finder or if I can use the new interface uh, for a custom table. So I'll just give you an example, it may be easier. Um, if I want to look at something like income and have a breakdown like by the United States, um, a particular state and the county, and then I also want to look at it by gender, race, and ethnicity, is it still possible to do that? Yes, you absolutely can do that. There are no changes in terms of the pre-made tables associated with the change in websites from American Fact Finder to data.census.gov. So if it was data that you were able to find before, um, chances are very high that there wouldn't have been any other unrelated changes and you'll also be able to find that on the new site and you would not need to go to the microdata. Just to walk through super quick, one of the things you mentioned was income broken out by race and ethnicity, you would just want to choose the appropriate topic boxes. So if you want a cross tabulation, you would choose income and earnings, and then you might choose race and ethnicity. And when you run the search, this example gives us the first set of tables that gives income breakout for the white alone, householder population, black or African American alone, and then the other major race and ethnic groups and you can just continue to scroll through the results to see what other tables are available. I know we have a set for median income broken out by race and ethnicity as well, in addition to others. So check that out, and then we walk through the webinar how you could add more than one geography um, to your search. So we also have the slides that, that are going to be available as well. Um, if you have any additional questions as you're running through a specific search, just give us an email and we'd be happy to fill in any gaps or walk you through the process if you email said by dot feedback at census.gov. We show no further questions at this time. Great. Well, thank you all so much for tuning into the webinar today. We'll also be inviting any feedback that you have. We always want to make these sessions as valuable as possible in your feedback on the webinar and anything that was helpful or things that we can do better moving forward. We would definitely appreciate that. Once again, thank you all for tuning in today, and we hope to see you again in the future.